Well, all eyes are on the Baltimore City Council tonight. Members are meeting for the first time since Mayor Scott vetoed their pension bill. The fast-tracked bill, sponsored by Council President Nick Mosby, is leaving council members on different sides. Eight members are joining council president, five members are saying no, and two others not joining any side. Mayor Brandon Scott's veto appears to be shoring up support for some leaders inside City Hall, while alliances are apparently being made. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost joins us live with a look at how the veto could be shaping the 2024 election outlook. Mackenzie? Yeah, Mary Kai, this is just the latest blow for the City Council President Nick Mosby coming in the form of that veto from Mayor Brandon Scott. And now some political experts are saying other members inside City Hall are taking a look at this, potentially setting up an opportunity for the voters to decide who they want to see as the City Council President come 2024. Nick Mosby's no stranger to politicking, working in City Hall as a councilman before a failed mayoral run in 2016, then going on to Annapolis as a state delegate. So, Mr. President, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. And in 2020, Mosby elected a city council president from expanding his office on the taxpayer's dime to breaking fire codes with contentious housing council hearings. Mr. Marks. Now a rare mayoral veto on Mosby's pension plan. I think what you're seeing is people starting to pick up sides. Some city council members lining up behind Mosby while others are lining up to take jabs. They see a weakened leader and a weakened leader is like a wounded animal and it is definitely subject to prey. I think there's a lot of different teams. There's a team Mosby, there's a team Brandon, there's also even maybe a team Cohen. Councilman Zeke Cohen, not afraid of pushing back on the council president, especially during an affordable housing hearing. That's an outrageous claim. That's that. an out. Councilman Cohen, we've gone over that. I think I think I did a good job of controlling the did the chamber to go back well, and forth. Well, I feel pitch. well, I feel on behalf of my colleague and my mayor that I'm going to need to express my concern city about it. The president, I did that. Now, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. That same one sparking an inspector general report. Political analyst John Deedy says Cohen is seizing a political moment that could turn into momentum. I think he wants to run for city council president. I think he sees the opportunity. The councilman from the first district has been a vocal critic of Mosby's pension plan that would have made it easier for part time council members to earn lifetime benefits. The idea that we would rush a really important piece of legislation that's going to have a long-term impact on the fiscal health of the city to me felt incredibly irresponsible. Didi says the other seven members who backed Mosby on the pension plan that was shot down by Mayor Brandon Scott now have a decision to make moving forward. Continue to back Mosby, challenge him, or look elsewhere. If they feel that there's not a lot of long-term political support for Nick, They've got to think of their own future and their their own survival, so, you know, you know, survival of the fittest. Council President Mosby's support also hinges on what happens with his wife, City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby, inside a federal courtroom. Set for trial in March, Marilyn Mosby faces two perjury and two false mortgage application statement charges. And Nick Mosby could end up being called as a witness. In a March superseding indictment of Marilyn Mosby, federal prosecutors raising questions about Nick's potential involvement. According to the indictment, Marilyn Mosby, quote, falsely claimed that her husband had made her a gift of $5,000 to be transferred at closing to then be used for the Longboat Key vacation home. The indictment claims Nick Mosby wired $5,000 to an escrow agent. But at the time, prosecutors claim Nick Mosby didn't have $5,000 in his checking account. And instead, Marilyn Mosby gave Nick the money. Prosecutors say Nick then shuffled it around before sending it for the house. If Marilyn Mosby's found guilty. That does nothing to help Nick's reputation if... That turns out worst case scenario for the Mosby's. People are going to be, you know, looking at things, saying what kind of political opportunity is there. As council president, Nick Mosby earns more than one hundred and thirty one thousand seven hundred dollars annually. The pension divide could evolve into deeper breaks in the council, potentially leaving the council president with dwindling support, setting the stage for alliances among some members that emerge even more so as we get closer to the next election cycle. Now, Council President Nick Mosby has yet to indicate his political future aspirations, but according to the State Board of Elections website, the Council President has more than $450 in campaign finance violation fees. Mary? And Mackenzie, we're also getting reaction from Nick Mosby. What is he saying tonight? 
Yeah, we did obtain a copy of a letter that the council president sent to the mayor about the veto that happened last week. The council president says that he disagrees with the ethics board's concerns about the pension plan, saying reducing the amount of time required for these leaders to qualify for their pension is more about equity. He also says that there needs to be more communication among leaders. The letter goes on to say, let me read you a part of it. He says, quote, we missed a chance once again to work together to resolve your concerns through the legislative process. Adding residents are truly tired of the disconnection of city government and officials. Now we'll have to see if that communication does improve between the council president and the mayor. We saw this, those two on separate pages earlier this year, especially when it came time to when the mayor announced the changes in the safe streets management. The council president said that happened without the mayor alerting anyone in City Hall. Live outside City Hall, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News.